Hey, Rick from Supai here. And on today's tutorial, what we're gonna be making are some real-time visual effects using OpenGL shaders. Now, what you might think is that sounds really, really complex, but what we're gonna do is do this piece by piece as a bit of an intro. Now, what we've got here is a, a program called CodeLive. Now, you can download CodeLive from here hexa.net and essentially what we can do is download this you can get a license but you can use it for free you can install it for windows and mac and linux including raspberry pi as well now what you'll get is if you open this up is something that looks like this now i've kind of edited mine just to look a little bit easier to read you might have this shader in the background here but what we're essentially saying here is we want to make a open gl shader now, a shader is a way that something looks and colors things in. Now, we have some complicated things that look like this. So you might see this and go, this is too hard, this isn't for me. But what we'll talk about is how to add this in piece by piece. Now, essentially what this language is, is called GLSL. GL stands for OpenGL, graphics language, and SL stands for shading language. So what does this look like? So essentially what we have here are two different parts. We have a vertex part and a fragment part. Now we're mainly gonna be worried about how this looks, so the color of this. So we're gonna be doing our code in fragment. Vertex is kind of how the structure of this looks. We just want it to be a flat rectangle, so no worries about how it looks, um, but the color is the thing that we wanna change. And essentially how a shader works is it does things on a per pixel basis. It doesn't have any reference to anything else around it. We need to worry about what exactly is that pixel. So in here at the moment, we have some defaults. This default is using a lot of math that looks pretty complex. Now, the thing that we're going to be mainly worrying about is this line here. This GL fragment color is equal to a VEC4, a vector 4, which has a few different parts in this. Now this is the default, we can actually start playing around with this a little bit more. But essentially what this is saying is, what is the color of each individual pixel and how does it broken up into four different parts? And those four parts, they're red, green, blue, and alpha. So essentially what I can do is I can remove this line here, we'll get a little error, we'll get rid of this line here, we'll get an error, and we'll get rid of this line here, and we'll get an error, disappear. Now essentially what we can put is if we have just one number in here, essentially what they'll do is just repeat and say for every single channel be 100%. So essentially all the red, all the green, all the blue and all the alpha are 100% which gives us this white color. And essentially if I put all the rest in here again, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0 and a comma after each one, this does the same thing. However, what we can start to do is play around with some of these vector numbers now, the red, green, blue, and alpha channel. So for instance, if I want to turn off red, I can say this is zero. So if I turn off red, it gives us green and blue. Green and blue together gives us a cyan color. And I can change some of these numbers to be whatever I want. So instead, this could be 0 0.5 or 4, and we can start playing around with some of these colors. 0 0.2 in here, obviously a very dark color, 0 0.9, and just playing around with some of these colors now. But essentially what you might notice is this gives us the same color everywhere. So what we're saying here is every single pixel in our shader over here should be the same color, 0 0.8, 0 0.4, 0 0.9, and 1. However, what we want to do is change this to be different per pixel. Now what we really need to focus on is making a color per pixel instead. And this is kind of what this line up here does. Now essentially what we've got here is we've got two parts. We've got a V text quad which is stands for texture coordinate, where in this place is our pixel. Now what this is, gives us is a number. So from zero in the corner to one over here and zero and one all the way down to the bottom. And essentially what they've done as a default in here is they've reset this so that we have zero, zero in the middle. So we have zero, zero here and it goes to minus one and plus one, minus one and plus one in this way. Now we don't need this, we can actually just keep it as it is for now, but essentially what this is saying is it's just changing the coordinate system. Now UV stands for X and Y in most cases. And the reason it doesn't, in, it, we're not calling it X and Y in this case, is because it could be on a circle for instance, so we're still changing things, not just in X and Y, but in different coordinates. However, what we can do is use these kind of coordinates across and down to basically give us a number for each pixel. So instead of this being something like 0.8, what I can replace it with is something like uv.x. 
Now you might notice this hasn't really changed, but if you look in this top corner, essentially what we've got is this kind of like fade effect coming on here. Now what I can do is change this in different directions. So this next one could be UV Y. And you might notice now we have these kind of going across in two different ways. Now, the reason why it's all blue in this corner is because we've reset these coordinates to basically say be more than one in this corner. So I'm actually just going to replace these bits here and just say go from zero to one and zero to one. So I'm going to get rid of like that. So now what I get is this gradient style effect, which basically says at this point up here be zero and zero here. So essentially this is saying no red, no green, just be blue which kind of makes sense. And essentially we have different colors for different points on these coordinates. However, what I can start to do is build things in here. So instead, what I'm going to add instead of this thing in here is I'm going to add a new variable that says change for each individual thing. So here, what I'm going to write is the word float. Float is basically a number with a decimal point and say red. And by default, this is going to equal to uv.x and then semicolon. So we're holding this as a value. We're not using it anywhere just yet. If I change this here for red, it's going to look the same. We've just basically taken this out for different things. And again, I'm just going to write a float called blue. It doesn't have to be called blue. It could be called whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it the blue channel and do the same thing here. Oh, that's green. Sorry. Let's call it green, not blue. Get them in the right order. And the same thing for the last one. Let's have the last one float blue. And this is just going to be 0.9 as well. So basically, I'm just moving them into position. So again, if I change this number now, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, I've got this kind of like changing thing here. So no blue up to full blue. Now, of course, what I can start to add in here is a little bit of math. Now, of course, if you're scared of math, don't worry about it. We'll talk about this along the way. Now, the thing that we're going to be using is a sine wave that looks something like this. We're going to have these little hoops and kind of waves that go across our thing. So how do we use this? What I can do is around this thing, I can write the word sine, sine and round brackets around each one. Now it hasn't changed it that much. However, what I do is if I multiply this using asterisks by a certain number, maybe something like 0 0.3, 3 0.0, you might notice here that we have these kind of wave effects. So if I increase this number 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and keep going up, you might notice now that we have these kind of different points coming in, especially if I had a pretty high number. Now you might notice that these kind of pinker stripes here are not quite as wide as the blue stripes. And the reason for that is our colors want to go between zero and one. However, if we look at sign graphs, by default, they go between one and minus one. So I want to take this and squash it down a little bit. How do I do that? I'm going to multiply this sine wave, this whole sine wave, by 0 0.5 times this. Now this fades it out, but we still have things going in the negative direction. So I want to push this sine wave up a little bit to basically make it go between one and zero. So before this, I'm going to do 0.5 plus this. So now what we've got is these stripes just in the x direction that changed the red channel. And if I change this number now to something like 200 or 20, we'll get these kind of different effects coming in here. Now, of course, what I can start to do in here is not just take this UV in the X direction. I can also do it in the Y direction too. So if I go in here and say plus UV dot Y and then times this by something like 3.0, you'll notice that we get these diagonal effects up here. Now, the reason for that is we're going across and down each time we pick the red channel. So we get these kind of diagonal effects. And we can start to do this for different channels now as well. I could do this for the green and the blue channel completely differently. Now, there's one more thing that we can pass in here, which is in this sidebar called time. So I've got a variable here. It's a float, basically a decimal number with time. And this has been passed in up here. Now, I can use this time variable in my code and say, well, I want to put it in in the waves as well. I want to move these waves around. So before any of this, I'm going to say time plus all of this. So you'll notice now that because we're using some time, we're moving these waves around. They're going across. But I could multiply this as well. So I could say this times, that's a lot. So maybe something like 20 times. So this is going 20 times the speed. Make that 10 a little bit slower. Make that something like 3 a little bit slower too. 
Now we've got this kind of thing building up. We've kind of got this in motion. Now, of course, what I can do is use the same effect here in this green and blue channel as well. So instead, I'm gonna get rid of this, kind of copy what I'm gonna do from above. I'm gonna take this line from here to here, copy and paste. Same here, copy and paste. Now, the reason why this goes to black is this is doing exactly the same thing in exactly the same place. If it's all red, it's all green and it's all blue. So we're gonna get all white. If it's none of those, it's gonna be black. So it's always gonna be grayscale. However, if I start changing some of these numbers around now, so this time for green, for instance, let's make that something like 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Maybe we'll change this number for X to be something like three. And maybe we'll change this Y to be actually just zero. So this goes straight down. And believe maybe I'll change some of these numbers as well. Maybe this is way too quick. And I wanna do 0 0.75, I'm just writing some numbers down from earlier. Maybe this is two and two. Here we go, we can see these kind of things come into effect. Maybe the red, I'm gonna change that as well. The time's a bit too quick. Maybe one, and maybe something like three in this direction, but zero in this direction. What we'll get, actually that was about three, uh, and yeah, that looks a bit better. Actually, maybe let's change some of these numbers around. Maybe make that zero and three, so these just switch around. And what we get is this effect where we've got this kind of blended rainbow effect going on pretty quickly. So we can change some of this and change how this moves. We've got the red channel that just goes across. We've got the green channel just going down because this is zero and this is zero. And then we've got some diagonals across blue that go across this way. Now, one thing that I can do as part of Code Life is I can actually add some audio into this. So for instance, I've got the SuPy theme up here. How do I pass this in? Well, technically this will listen now in the audio spectrum split. Now, if I go to preferences, I can pick audio and I can listen to my display audio. You can see me talking here. If I press done, I can actually start playing some music that's something. Let's download it, it's on my desktop. There it is. So if I start playing this music. So I can see this waveform changing depending on certain spectrum. So this is gonna give me three things, my X bit, my Y bit, and a Z bit here. And if I change these gains up, as you notice as I start talking louder and louder, and louder and louder, these things change as well. Now what I can do in here is I can pass this spectrum in to these values up here. It's already built into this. So I'm gonna use spectrum. This area is X, how much X, how much Y, how much Z. Obviously I've got a relatively deep voice, so Z bit isn't going up too much. But what I can do is maybe take some stuff off. So on the red channel, let's minus the spectrum dot X, the deepest bit over here. So as you can see with the red channel, if I start to talk, it is going away. Now, if I do this on other things as well, maybe the spectrum for Y on the green channel, if I start to talk, this also flicks away. Now, of course, I might, wanna, I might not want it to go to black. I might want it to go to white. So instead, what I can do is the negative of this. So instead, what I could say is maybe instead of this going this way, I wanna add a minus one to this. So this is going in the negative way. It's gonna be white and then fade out the opposite way. And I'm gonna do plus, same thing in this direction too. Now this maybe is a bit too extreme. As you can see, if I'm talking, it flicks quite heavily. What I can do is just multiply this bit by something like 0.2 and multiply this one by 0.2 so it softens it out a little bit. But what we can start to play around with is some of these numbers now. Maybe I could say instead of plus, this is multiply. I'm gonna multiply these things so we get this fade effect. And if I just shut up for a second and play this song. Let's see how it looks. So by just adding a few lines of these uh, code in here, I've got this real-time visual effect that I can use and can play around with really, really quickly. So all I've done is I've added the sine wave, I've added some time, and I've added some points within this texture of time and X and the Y coordinate. And all I'm doing is then passing it in as a red, green, and blue channel. So this is how we can make a real-time visual effect using OpenGL 
very, very quickly.